<laughs> what is going on guys it's ben from the parker brothers and welcome back to another fishing video today you join me down a very 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 wet linear complex and actually i'm on st john's today now i'm here with my good friend kevin bone and someone you've definitely definitely seen on the channel before and probably the last video you've ever seen kevin was our top of one and um We've done really well and he catched a really nice scaly banger. If you haven't seen that guys, head over to the channel and check it out. So as you do, Linear, we turned up this morning, got on the gate, sort of we were like 10 cars back and um, had in our head we were going to fish B2. And I thought, yeah, B2, here we go. And I had a mate sort of coming off so I could jump in his peg and stuff and turn up this morning. Headed straight, gates open, headed straight for B2. And I've never seen so many fish spawning in my life. So that straight away was a no-brainer. Me and Kim said, nope, not going to do it. I'm not even going to put ourselves in the situation. I respect that the fish are spawning. Stay away from them. So that's what we've done. We come off that late. B1, they're not spawning, but we physically couldn't get a peg. Hardwick, again, we looked out, walked around, couldn't get a peg. So we thought, right, our only option is now, after sort of thinking we might have to go home, Kev, we sort of thought we'd walk around St. John's. And I'm literally in the last peg that was left on St. John's. I'm smack banging them. It's not a bad peg. It's not a bad peg, but I'm sort of sandwiched in between two people. But I've got a nice little bit of water out in front of me. And again, I'm over the next sort of, well, I, I'm going to probably pay for 24, but I might do 48. That's what me and Kevin said to begin with. Um, so I'm going to play it by and go from there. But I'm sort of in that middle bar, keeping the loop of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and what bait. Obviously, I'm here and I'm using Parker baits. I've got some chops with me today, a little bit of hemp. Um, some naturals to top and put in PVA bags and a few other little goodies as well flat spot being one of them and again I'll probably touch on that very soon because I haven't even made my mix yet I need to make my mix so that that's where I am that's what I'm doing that's how long I'm here for guys and um, before we start this video give us a thumbs up make sure you comment down below smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward and hopefully just hopefully myself and Kev can bring you an absolute banger <laughs> come on the car Right, so let's get this started. So let me just tell you where I'm at at the moment. So rods are there, haven't even thought about getting them out yet. I ain't even put a lead in the water. Someone's fishing some oil in a bait there. Look at that slit going through. So that's where I'm at. Net set up, and like I said, nothing in the water whatsoever. Bivy obviously set up, it's raining here. I'm absolutely soaked. I'm dripping like an egg sandwich. And um, <laughs> in front of me is my bivy. So what I thought it would be good, at, good to do is guys, to start off with, I always rush and I never show you my bait prep. So I thought what, what I'm going to do is that's the first thing I'm going to do today. So what I've done is in here I've got some OG fish um, chops. Now a lot of our ambassadors and a lot of customers as well have been doing very, very well on this. So first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some, on, get some of this in that bucket and I'll get back to you in a second. Happy day. So that's that. And what I've done is and I've used a small tub. It's only a little tub. I've got massive great ones next to me. But I only use a little tub because last time I come up here, I overdone it. And that wasn't on here. It was on another lake. And I think you can overdo it. So again, little small bucket. Again, from my from my point of view, it just tones me down a little bit. Especially when you're using a large spawn because to be fair, 10 spawns with a bucket like that, you've got the whole bucket out. So... So there it is, I've started off with half of it. It's gonna be primarily gonna be OG fish chops. What I'm gonna do is, I've got my hand in here. I've got some, just a handful of pellet. Now these are multi-mix pellets, something I've been playing about with, not on our website yet, but I'm literally just gonna do two handfuls of them. The reason for that is, is because what I do is I fish little tiny mesh bags with maybe that much pellet on with a little wafter over the top of the bait and i think that works a treat so i'm going to just just so there's some in the mix not loads i don't want loads in there because they're quite high oil, high oil they are so that's that next up i'm going to come in with some hemp and again i'll show you in a second when i've added that in what i'm going to do is in fact you know what i'll show you now stuff in here i've got hemp it's already had the flat spot which is all that stuff you'll see in there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go one terrible video in there apologies two that is it I don't want too much I really don't want too much of that in there um, everybody uses hemp up here it's the norm so I want them to fairly feeding on that chop really so I'll give that a good mix look at that so it looks something like that so again more chops in there than hemp and then every now and again they're gonna pick up a little bit of hemp so that's that so I'm gonna leave that at that now to add the liquids. Now I'm going to touch on them in a second. Bosch, this is the OG fish sauce which works very, very well and obviously our compliments are 
OG fish chops there and boilies. So, oh, let's just. I'm going to go half a bottle of that because I like the stuff. And then, and then the flat spot. Now, this here is like hemp oil on steroids, guys. It's the only way of putting it across. So, again, I'm going to go in with the flat spot. Not too much. You can see how much of a bottle I've used there. Maybe a little bit more. That'll do. Now, again, so I don't cover the camera. I'm going to mix it up and again, I'll come back to you. I'll see you in a second. <laughs> so, there it is. That is the final product and it's got a bit of a squish to it as well so if you were fishing close and you didn't need to swam it you could put it out in little golf balls or tennis balls depending on how big you want to get it so there it is and that's my honest mix of what I'm going to be using today really small food particles I'm going to fish little OG fish Parker Bates wafters over the top of this I want to catch them I don't want to feed them and I think when by the time this hits the bottom there's going to be next to nothing left part of bits of hemp and then the odd bit of sort of chop boilie in there like that there so there it is. Time to now, and I'm going to wash my hands in a second because they're absolutely stinking. Um, the time to now, what I'm going to do is, and again, another thing that I do do when I turn up at lakes like this where I haven't been watching the water because I've obviously been frantically setting up because of the rain, I'm literally going to sit in my bivvy now for an hour. As you can see, the wind is hacking down the end. There's loads of fish down the end, but I just physically couldn't get in the end. Like I said, I'm on the last peg in the lake. Wash that off, look. That's better. Clean now. But yeah, I'm literally going to sit back in that bivvy, watch the water for the next hour and let the fish show me or tell me what I need to do. If I don't see any signs, then I can start playing about the spots. But the last thing I want to do is start smashing leads in and um, potentially jeopardising me getting a bite. So that is the update for now, guys. I'm going to get back in my bivvy, watch the water, let that sort of fester there, that bait. Lovely, hence why I've done that first. And like I said, sit back and enjoy my session here at the Linear Fishery Complex on St John's. Come on the carp. Well, it'd be rude not to put a coffee in, would it? I've got these bad boys as well. Look at these. I think I spoke about these in the last vlog. They're like caramel sexy lattes. They are. They're absolutely bang. They're only a pound as well. If you haven't tried them, get on them. They're absolutely brilliant. Just put a sash in there, top out of a little bit of milk and then top the rest out of water. I tell you, on point they are. Time to watch my TV now. And hopefully the fish show me. Come on. Right, wow, well, that is me done. So, let me just talk you through. So, an hour watched out for probably just over an hour actually, and I saw one show, um, more so definitely in the gentleman's water to my left, but sort of in the same range of as where I'm fishing, sort of that far distance out, if that makes sense. Um, so I sat there for an hour, saw that one show, so obviously nothing really in front of me to go off. So what I thought I'd do is instead of smashing it about, I put my lead out a couple of times um, over the spot and pulled it through. Sort of halfway back, it's about just under, just over 12 wraps it is, I've found a lovely, it's not gravel, it's like pullover silt, but it's like quite, there's, there's a little bit of silkweed as well, a little bit, but I am fishing foam, so I know I'm sort of pulling on top of it. So I've done what I know best, I've put three rods on there and I've, all I've done is though this time, very very different to Ben's normal way of turning up at the lakes and we give it to him, here we go, sit back and sort of go from there. But now I've given him six spoms, yes yeah, six spoms over the top of that mix I showed you earlier. I've got three rods, I've got two about a foot apart, my two left hand, the left hand and my middle rod, my right hand rod. I've actually, and I'm not going to sit here and say I meant to do it because I didn't want to get it closer, but it hit, hit clip crisp and it, it was just off to the right of the spot. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave that. So I did. So I'm fishing two on the money and one off the spot. The six bombs went, you know, I took my time with them, really took my time, pulled it back, hit clip lovely, and they've all went out absolutely beautiful, which puts a smile on my face because now I can sit here. No, although, like I said earlier, I'm sandwiched in between two beds. Would I have picked this peg? No, I'd have been on the wind where I've been seeing the fish. There's loads of fish down the end, but beggars can't be choosers, and um, this is the realities of fishing. You know, there's no, especially from, from my point of view, I don't turn up. There's no, like, um, cornered off swims or anything like that, or pre baited swims. You know, I'm turning up like everyone else and trying to make it happen. So, time to sit back now and um, to be honest with you now I've got the rods out I might try and get about an hour's sleep or a couple of hours sleep to recharge I've been up since about right hand rod 
um, free this morning and I'm absolutely knackered if I'm honest um, you know as it is you get excited before I say I say this every time I get really excited before sessions and that you know like a kid at Christmas the night before you know sitting there thinking about how I'm gonna fish is sad it really is isn't it <laughs> but no I'm here now like I said I could digest what I've, what I've done the last couple of hours like I said I'm happy with what I've done I can't really do much more I've let, got to let the bait and the rigs do what they're gonna do and hopefully um, hopefully I get a rub while I'm sleeping so yeah that's the update for now guys um, that's what I'm doing with my rods um, so fingers crossed next time you see me I've got an absolute nosser in the net if not I'll touch base with you in a couple of hours time well, I thought it would be about time to give you a little update really and nothing really to report I think I haven't, I haven't had any sleep yet to be honest with you but I've been watching the water as you do um, and there's a guy who's just had one over to the left in the middle of sort of where the the, the, the way I look at it is it's like one big dumbbell and obviously at the bay end it kicks round but it's sort of come you've got like a bowl here it goes smaller in and it goes out again when well, that smaller bit in is where the guy the other side fishing right in the middle of it has just had one so that's a good sign I don't know whether he's fishing on the bottom still raining it's relentless the rain absolutely relentless it really is but another coffee on the go down here look but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn you around guys here we go first look out the swim really from my perspective so tallest tree out there I've got two rods on there on a dinner plate sort of literally about a foot off each other and one just off it so you sort of the, 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 like the tail that comes off of that tree there I'm fishing literally inches off that just to the right of it um, so that's that that's where my three rods are so like that like you said the wind is absolutely mowing down this end it just looks bob on so when I turned up this morning um, every peg was full and there was two people coming out of here and we must have been about half an hour late because there was two buckets already put in but that there would have been the ideal scenario and I'm absolutely gutted myself and Kev didn't get in them pegs so we come up together it's a social for me and Kev Kev's actually down the bank right on the end on the corner and it's absolutely perfect for the pole situation if he catches anything over the duration of time I'm going to go down talk you over his swim and um, obviously introduce you to Kev if you haven't met him before so there it is that's that that that's that sort of view and that's where Kev is like I said um, kettle there cooking without breaking my legs now oh a little bit muddy here I've set my wrap sticks up behind the bivvy, but the other good thing is, which I'm quite happy with, is there's two free pegs there. Now, when I turned up, there was people in them pegs, and um, there's not now. So hopefully that might, might just might pull the fish more so around my area. But like I said, the wind's sort of coming across at the moment. Kev is going to be on it tonight, I tell you. I reckon he's going to have a few down there. Obviously, as you can see, ramoed all the way down. Um, the long chuck swim over there I love that swim never fished it but I'd love to love to think it'd be amazing if you ever got in it but it's always 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 um, got someone in that one in the corner and obviously everywhere around the main bowl and sort of up there as well the shallow end sorry where you sort of long chuck it at the other the other side that's full everywhere is full so right I'm gonna get back down here oh, back in my cave because I was getting absolutely soaked then and as you can see by the camera let me clean you off Sorry about that. I thought I'd mix it up. So another coffee. I've got these ones as well. And to be fair, I bought these yesterday because I didn't think I was going to go in the shop this morning. The shop was open, so I thought I'd quickly pop in so I didn't get milk. And then I got the um, the caramel ones I normally get. But yeah, I'm going to give one of these a bash now. See what they're like. Come on the cup. Oh Ben, you do do it to yourself, don't you? God, you get absolutely soaked in it. Need to like pull the things round. Look at it, savage out there, absolutely savage. Inside the bivvy and it's still getting on the lens. Look at that. Madness, absolute madness. Come out of nowhere that, really aggressive. I get my milk, there's my coffee, and I've made a... <laughs> like used the inner skin I don't really want to be tough as soon as it stops I'm gonna pull it back I don't not like not having plenty of you but <laughs> should do the trick for now and it's starting to slow up already I'll see you in a bit I'm 
gonna make it a quick one, but on that right hand rod, the one that I said just pulled just off the spot, it's been a couple of hours and I thought it was a no brainer to just try a zig. Nobody's catching nothing, so I thought I'd just put a zig out. It's about eight foot, I'm gonna start at that and maybe play about, um, I've just seen a fish show over to the right as well and also right against the bank the other side so the fish are slowly maybe they're starting to move up all this fish in the zone fingers crossed i'm gonna get back in that baby and say dry <laughs> so the guy next door i've just been speaking to him and his rod's absolutely belted off and he's in so fingers crossed he can get this in and i can show you what's going on it's taking him for a right merry dance to be fair so I just seen it strip about 20 yards off him as well. So fingers crossed, you can get this in. I can show you. Good boy. I've got my blade and I've got next door freezer. How big then, boss man? 35, seven. <laughs> Get, in. Get in there, mate. Fish bump. Thank you, man. Get in there. <laughs> Push the tape towards me a little bit, eh? Wow, Simon next to me, his rod's tanked off. <laughs> Look at the results. Thirty-five pound. What did we say? Thirty-five seven. seven. Thirty-five pound seven in a new PB, mate. Yeah. Happy, happy day. Smashed it. Get in there. Wow, 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 look at that. What a fish. Big apple slice scales up the back of it, mid 30. New PB. Weird though, it just switched on just like that. So in front of me now, the wind sort of turned. And I've been sat in my bivy, I nearly even went over to Tom I said, look, I was going to say, I've just seen about four shows in the space of 20 minutes, right over the top of the spot. And um, it happened, it happened. I heard his rod absolutely tank off, went over there. He's playing it for a while and I can see why, because it was an absolute beautiful fish. But look at this. Lovely, lovely um, clear skies behind us now. And earlier it was obviously black as black and peeing it down, but... I think that that is the range stop now and I'm looking forward to getting my, my teeth into the next 48 hours I really really am especially after seeing that that gets the gets the old blood pumping it really does so I'm gonna leave it at that now guys I'm gonna sit back lock onto the water I've already topped up with a couple of spoms so that now makes 10 spoms I've put over the spot and that is it of the chop mix I showed you earlier but like I said I'm gonna jump back in the bivy now and have a bit of a chill out I'll see you in a bit. Right, wow, well, it's dinner time and I'm going to do some foodie bits because I know people that watch the channel absolutely love the foodie bits. Now, um, I had Trev come up, which is a good friend of mine, which is Mark's dad, um, come up to the factory the other day and he come down, stayed for a few hours, we had a few coffees and that, and he helped me with the machine, made some bait together and that. And he brung me down a chicken curry and I've also got a chilli at home. So he brung me down this one and I think it's what a great idea. So he cooks it at home and we've got to do is warm it through basically, cook it up a little bit more. But what I'm going to do tonight is, he brung down this as well, firecracker rice. I've never seen that before. And I know I go use the Uncle Ben's of spicy rice all the time, but that's something different and I'm looking forward to trying that. So I'm going to get this firecracker rice. I'm going to make some egg fried rice with that. Cook that first and then basically add that in. So... I'm not going to record that guys, but I'll keep you posted at the end and the end result and let you know how it tastes. So that is the rice in, I can smell the heat coming off it. Oh. La. A bit weggy in there. Give that a mix up. mixed up. Well it's normally Trev Ramsey, but tonight I'm going to be starring Gordon Ramsey's cousin. So, <laughs> egg mixed in. I'm a little bit worried because that's quite big. And that frying pan, believe it or not, is quite small, that's my hand, so it's not very big like. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have an overflow. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna have to mix that really careful and um, yeah, I'll keep you updated in a little while when this is properly, properly cooked through, but it looks absolutely lovely, Trev, mate. Look at that, boy. Well, it don't much, get much better than that, does it really? It's absolutely beautiful out there at the moment. The wind's chopping in towards me. 
and um, I just found out as well that Simon next door he had that fish at 20 wraps as well I'm only fishing just over 12 so in the back of my head I am struggling I can pull it that little bit further out but I do think with this wind they are going to pull down there and um, come closer in look at that my blooming jumper out there drying I've got my coat on top of the bivvy and dinner with a view she's still cooking look at that I just tried some and Trev absolutely beautiful thank you very much mate I'm gonna sit back and enjoy that now fill a hole and hopefully them rods rip off well it wouldn't be a Parker Brothers Bloomin' video would it without some Garibaldi's now these are the Posh Garibaldi's and Nick got me these so thanks very much Nick oh, lovely yeah I'm gonna put the camera down see you in a bit so it's seven o'clock and the wind has turned again now it's sort of coming towards me more so down this way it's crazy it's all over the place the wind it really really is no real signs of fish but I'm sat here absolutely locked onto the water and I physically can't do much more Rob's on his way down as well guys um, and that's definitely someone you've seen on the channel before good friend of mine and also a Parker Bates ambassador and I'm sure he'll come here later and bag a few <laughs> see in a bit so I just topped up with a little bit of bait there and um, the Sun's going down beautiful over the back made it a little bit hard to cast but I got there in the end Three, two rods on the money they're about a foot off each other I just thought I'd redo them fresh little bags on them little bags of pellets with the flat spot on right hand rods on a two-foot zig and that is how I'm gonna do this evening but look who it is the man of the moment mr. Nossa catcher himself Hello. <laughs> He's um, so Rob's jumping up next to me. Um, again, I'm sure you've seen him on the channel. It would have been probably last week's video where we were on B1 and he absolutely ripped up trees. But look at that. And he comes here within five minutes, a fish shows in between both of us, and that's the closest I've seen a fish show all day. It's typical. It's absolutely typical. You watch, you get in here, and they're Nick and Nossa. <laughs> right. Well, he's got to get his gear around, he's going to nick my bar in a minute, go around, bring the stuff around and um, set up. How long are you here till, mate? Sunday, possibly. Possibly Sunday. Animal. This peg here is still free next to us, so I think T's coming down Friday. I'm off Friday alongside Kev, but this peg is actually free as well, so look at that. Anyway, I'll get back to my swim. But, um... Fingers crossed, we can nick one tonight because it's looking absolutely beautiful out there. So Rob's just doing his wraps now and he's found the bar out there. Three casts in, so fair play to him. But something that myself and Rob do I thought was quite interesting is down here what you'll find is, is little piles of stones. Now here's my stones and here's Rob's over here and the reason for that is, is what we do is mine's 12 to stones now there's a couple of reasons for that when you get up at the middle of the night and you miss a wrap or something if you know you don't come up to that and you know you're probably wrong you can always clip up on that but also and the main reason for it is if you go up to them stones you're fishing by the inch every time so as long as you hit that clip get a donk you're fishing inches on your spot as opposed to sort of oh that will do again and I'll do it to there but actually you're you know a foot two foot off your spot so yeah just no, no, it's, no it's a real small thing but it can change your fishing if you get it right and hit that clip perfectly every single time. Right, starting to come alive out here now, just beyond in the black there, in the distance where the shadow is there. Fish just showed, there's fish starting to show, and again over the back there. I think what's happening is they've pushed up in that bay in the day, and as the night comes in, you can sort of see him sort of coming across, and it's quite apparent as well because it's they're there and they're in their numbers so fingers crossed they moved that little bit more I've seen one here show sort of just to the right that's the closest I've seen it obviously I'm fishing here and it probably was here and again and again <laughs> jeez <sighs> very very exciting stuff so again five quick spoms of the original mix over the top the fish again are getting closer closer and closer and closer so the idea behind that was to get the bait out before they get over this spot and to be honest with you i had a line on my middle rod already so 
I know I just said it, but come on, come on, Rod. Well, I'm in bed now. Rob's just topping up with a few spums. There's a light the other side on over there now. But time to get some sleep and hopefully get woken up by an absolute nosser. Well, it's 20 past four. About half past three, about an hour ago, I lost one. It's all subject. I'll touch base with you in the morning and let you know exactly what's gone on. Well, in a few hours time. Absolutely gutted, right by the net as well. <sighs> 15 minute battle, speaks in a bit, saying too much. Bye. Would you lose one? <laughs> Mate, they're out of their numbers. I've just seen two fish flop just off the back of the spot. Is it gone? That's just me on the line there. Oh no, mate, gutted. Your turn now. <laughs> Yeah, mate. So as if Rob just comes over, he goes, what is that? Look, a little baby pike. It's just jumped out of the water. <laughs> Look at him, let's get you back. Come on, mate. <laughs> oh, wow, man, how's that, mate? Breakfast time, so I've got a coffee there. Rob's just brung me over. I've got some eggs bacon in there, curry eggs and bacon because I haven't cleaned the pan and I don't care, from with a bit of spice, look at that, I've, uh, I've had my breakfast, just finishing off my coffee now look, lovely, Rob's next to me and uh, I just thought I'd touch on see what happened last night, I know I sort of briefly said yeah, I've just lost a fish in that, so around half past three, four o'clock, right hand rod, my zig absolutely melts into action. By this point, Rob's asleep, everybody's asleep. Rod pulls off, hits into it, I was paying it for about 20 minutes to come in. I took out both my two rods next to it, I was gutted. And there was no passing the rod underneath the other rods. At this point, it was long gone. Um, struggled to get my waders on and stuff. Um, dropped my head torch up here, as you know, you got my holding the rod and got my, got my head torch as you do. And it's went over to the left and then it's touched Rob's line and Rob's come out of his rod. I'm like, no, no, I'm in, I'm in mate, I'm in. Um, and it's obviously touched his line, come off that. He's then flicked his drag on his thing or took his bail arm off so the line's then obviously free running. Walked over to me, as he's walked up to me, I've got my head torch on the fish. We've both seen this fish. Um, say it was a good 20 but it is what it is and then like I said as, 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 as I've pulled it up probably given it obviously by this point it's taken me on a merry dance so I've tightened up the clutch probably a little bit more than I should it's done one big head bang the, the zig's popped out of its mouth and it sort of paused there for all of about it seemed like five seconds but it was probably about one standard there this you know just waddled off I thought oh, gutted I was absolutely gutted but anyway the bacon roll and the eggs have definitely made me feel better and this caramel light is definitely hitting the spot so at least there is some good news and the food was lovely um, I haven't really seen much come out this morning after I got off the video to you after I lost that one I watched the guy, the guy over to the left catch one right along that margin again that's a lovely peg I would love to get in there one day but yeah that is what happened last night where I'm at now um, the time is now like 11 o'clock 11 o'clock time flies when you're having fun so uh yeah i'm gonna leave it at that guys and i'll touch base with you in a little bit and hopefully i know i say it every time but hopefully next time you see me myself or rob i've got an absolute nosser in the net i'm not asking for much just a 49 pound ghosty <laughs> 49 pound ghosty or the box come on the box little update so it is now what is the time now it's now just gone 12 and i thought what i'm going to do is i'm going to play about my zig so Obviously last night, like I mentioned on the right hand rod, I had a fish on on a zig. So what I've done with that, obviously I have to take it out, all the commotion, I all, r r took out all three rods. So what I've done is when I put the rods back out, I put two on zigs at the same um, depth that I had the fish on. 
and I kept one on the bottom um, and that's how it went through the duration till obviously about an hour ago and I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the process I'm going to put three zigs out on all three rods being that the sun's coming up now and if they're going to be up in the high levels of the water it's going to be now personally so what I've done is I've put a, uh, a zig just over eight foot and I'm not what I'm going to do is guys I'm going to put some old footage up of when I was down here fishing here a couple of months ago in really bad conditions and I actually talked through how to make the zigs how I fish my zigs the reasons behind the zigs um uh, the, the particular um, material I use, which is double strength, um, the, the reasons why I use black foam, it's all in that video. And uh, if you haven't seen that one, guys, go over to the channel and check it out. And it's my last video on here in St. John's. I think I'm on the um, the thumbnail like this, and it's really windy. I'm pulling a funny face, so that should help you find that one. So going back to what I was saying, so that's what I've done. I've actually put my, 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 my famous little black zig I've used for years. I mean, I... I, I, I loads of people use black foam i love black foam it's an absolute great tool and um, like i said i've used it for years and to be honest i wouldn't i wouldn't use anything else on zigs i'm not a big fan of using pop-ups a lot of people will use bright you know fluorescent pop-ups which is fair enough and it does do fish but me personally i like something a little bit subtle something that's going to look as natural as humanly possible which it does being that it's a black foam and if i want to add some fleck to it i can just play about with bait stops on the top whether that be red bait stops yellow bait stops and also add different colors kickers on as well so a lot of the fox stuff um obviously comes with the aligner liner doesn't it or well, whatever you call them with the little bit that goes around it looks like a little blood worm where you get the same effect the same visual when you do that with kickers and obviously changing that bait stop so again there's a bit more of an insight on how i fish zigs and the reasons why i'm fishing zigs and at the moment like i said so i've got one over ten and i've got my two that were on the spot i've kept my one on the spot at the same depth and i've pulled the other one away so i can sort of have that as like a banker rod and i can play about different areas different scenarios of a sea show and fish i can act upon it put a zig on their head and hopefully nick a fish so that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to continue doing that for the duration of the next few hours guys and i'll probably touch base with you in a few hours time and um yeah I'll see you in a bit. I'm going to enjoy this afternoon. So it's definitely that time of the day, just coming up to sort of half past three now. And I'd rather get it done early, because then come lunch, sort of dinner time, everybody starts redoing their rods. I want to try and get it done and get all the motion done before that. So my right hand rod, I'm probably going to fish off the spot tonight on a longer zig off the back of the spot. My left and my middle rod, my middle rod I'm going to fish a zig on, which is obviously where I had to fish last night. I had it on my right hand rod, but it was on the spot, wasn't it? So that middle rod is going to be on a zig, and this is what I had it on last night. Tiny little zig there. And again, I don't want to touch on it too much and bore you guys, it's a simple setup. And um, that's basically what I'm fishing. Devastating in its own right. It's probably about two foot, just over two foot. Normal sort of leg clips out there of a long kicker to make sure it kicks out on the cast. And I always, always, always fish foam with that as well. So I know presentation, presentating when I cast as well. If I don't get that flip where it, the link flips out, I reel it back in and I go again. Fish is just boshed over the back there. See, I'm going to leave. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to start doing that now, and um, I sort of keep in the loop really um, as I go through this, and hopefully I can sort of get these rods out on the money. I didn't put much bait out yesterday, so today on them two rods over here, I'm going to put the rest of the bucket out of that chops I had yesterday, because obviously, I, as I said to you, I didn't put much out, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to fill it in, not fill it in, but put the rest of the bucket out over the two rods. Do that now, not top up tonight, wait for the fish to move in, and fingers crossed, just fingers crossed, it happens tonight. I'm off tomorrow, so I need to nick one tonight to beat the blank. Can't believe I lost that fish last night. Let's get this cig out. Happy days. Whoop, whoop took me on the third go I got it and it wasn't because I wasn't in it clip it wasn't because I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't getting it in the perfect direction of where I wanted it or in line with where I wanted it it's because I, I wasn't seeing that link flick out how I like it to I want to see that link flick out so I know I can sit there behind confident was tonight knowing that that zig is sat two foot up in the top of the water not not um, helicoptered around your rig and fishing two two inches off the bottom because it's got caught I know it's 
presentating and up. And also, you're probably wondering behind me here why I've got a pole and a wall, and there's a big reason for that as well. One, so I can always line myself up with that, and I know if I always walk up to that pole and fish just to the right of it, I know that as long as I hit clip, I'm on the money every time. And also, to me being a bit lazy, you can put your bucket over there. As long as you get get the balance right, it just sits there on top of the water. And you can just fill your swam up, and you don't have to keep bending over. So it's got two two things you can do. So there's that. Now time to get the other two rods out, guys, and um, go from there. Number one out, come on the cut. Right, so rod number two where I'm going to fish, just to the left of the rod I put out on the zig, the two foot zig. Seven inch boom section there, nice big lead, five ounce lead to just set the hook, and obviously it will drop off every time. Generic setup there, kicker, cut down off the seven inch. And then all I'm fishing there is basically, um, it looks like an OG fish, but what that is, is it's an artificial, because I'm having, I haven't had any problems this session, but I just love the way these sit, these little, they're, they're like a nine mil or eight mil, little bag of pellet, but what I've done is I've soaked him in the flat spot, pricked it with a needle, so it sort of infuses the bait and pulls into the plastic that little bit better. Um, works really well, I literally sit there for hours in the evening and the missus looks at you and goes what the hell is he doing over there again, fiddling about of his bits, not my personal bits, meaning the balls. And I'm just sat there and I'm stabbing these things and what I'm doing is it's just, then I leave them in the flat spot for weeks, months, and it just gives you a little edge with your plastic, so that's that. A little bit of putty on the end there, and as you can say they've got a bigger loop there, it's a bit more movement at the end, so there's that. Let's get this one out right now, next to that one, hopefully it goes out first time. This is my view at the moment. The winds turn exactly the same as it did last night. It's a few hours on since the last clip. And um, this guy's spawning over here at the moment. Obviously Rob's next to me, but like I say, that wind is sort of really aggressive. We've just seen a fish show just out here. We haven't put a rod on it because I've sort of committed to them. But if I do keep seeing fish show there, it's a no brainer. I'm gonna, or another sign, I will put a rod on that, definitely. But like I said, Kev is down the end tonight and hopefully, just hopefully, the man himself has has it off down there because if the wind keeps going in like that, he he's went up the shop today, got some pellet in that, and I think he's looking for a catfish. So fingers crossed. I think we've got fajitas tonight, so I'll update you when we're eating our dinner. See you in a bit. <laughs> right, well, I'm over with Rob guys, and I thought it'd be quite good to go over how he sort of prepares his bait and what he's doing. So Rob, mate, I'll let you do the talking. What are you doing then, mate? Well, we've got some uh Hemp and leaves from yep. Monster Particle, and then yep. I did have a few bags of uh, the chops, but ran out of them, so now I'm doing it myself. But yep. probably about half a kilo of the fruit and the, and the OG fish, just crumb them up in this uh, little magical thing. That's brilliant, isn't it? That what is what makes that then? NGT, I think it's like 15 pounds. Is that what it was? Yeah, 15 quid for that. Can't go wrong with really, you. Amen to that, yeah. That. Right, so there's the mix then. I don't know if you can see that. There, yeah, she's pulling up now, mate. Should we get, get me try and get a little armful for you before you put that in? Yeah, so very bitty bits. Yeah. And is this sort of your, it's just because it's sort of this time of year? So in the summer months, you sort of bulk out, or do you keep I it the same start throughout the year? I my chops or? and my, I'll still chuck some 40 millers in or 80 mils, but I just love my crumb and my chops. I think it keeps them there, it sort there. of feeding around that a little bit longer, mate, yeah, doesn't it? Definitely. Yeah, that's beautiful, that. So then what else you add in then, mate? good stuff the good stuff <laughs> so what you got there the og fish and the fruit and that sauce so yeah bit of both in there you're going with both do you yeah why not yeah and to be fair guys it's something i do myself yeah these are obviously liquid food li pure liquid foods no bulk is in no bs and it does what it says on the tin so mix 
so now it's set on that. <laughs> so is that it done? Yeah, that'll be me now. Look at that, mate. Absolutely beautiful. And you say that's done. I did notice something in your bag. Did you? Are you using a flat spot? Um, no, I've run out of it. You've run out. It all. There you go. See, yeah. I know he had something sneaky in there. <laughs> the flat spot product when he was um, spawning yesterday. You could see the big old flat spots out there and stuff. But um, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Cool. It's all gone. <laughs> So there it is. That is Rob's baiting approach or what he's going to be doing and putting out tonight. And um, is that, you're going to be putting all of that out, mate? Just little bits? I'm so check half of it out now. Yeah. And then probably check the rest of it down about 12 o'clock tonight, probably. Happy. Before I go to bed. And then, yeah, hopefully get some nice big carbon in it. Happy days. Happy days, mate. Right, I'll let you get on and get that bait out there. Well, me and Rob are nice, enjoying a nice water. <laughs> and um, what are you cooking for us tonight, then, Mr. Ramsey? Fajitas. Fajitas. Smoky beta barbecue. Oh, look at this, mate. Do you pre cut it all, don't you? And yeah, then, I do it at home. See, he's a little dark horse, really, because you <laughs> said this to me last time. I am the most unprepared person you will ever meet. And Rob, he chops up his chicken, what was it, peppers and onions. You put it in separate tubs, don't you, you bring... Yeah. Look, look at him in here. Oh, yeah. That's a tea thing, that is. Naan bread. That's definitely a tea thing. And rice. And a curry somewhere. You want to pull it out tomorrow when tea's here and say, look what i got here, go, yeah. You've been watching too much Parker Brothers YouTube channel, mate. <laughs> but, yeah, so he's got his... Um, it's all chopped up in there, ready to go. Just throws it in a pan, then heats it through, and then you got look. We got wraps as well, mate. We in like yeah. salsa and stuff. Salsa. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll update you very soon, guys. So there it is. Woof. Cheese, chicken, peppers, onions. Get in my stomach. <laughs> Lovely, jubbly, mate. Bish bash bosh. Bish bash bosh. <laughs> Call me Salt Bay. Salt Bay. <laughs> Don't get much better than that, does it really? Get in the comments down below, let me know. I know exactly what my thoughts are. Let's get back to this food. So I'm in Rob's swim and I've literally just seen a fish show on my spot. So I've ran round in my swim quickly, literally just there. Ran round, stand it out, lined it up. It's literally on me, absolutely on me. It's definitely a carp. Come on. The run. Well, look how you're trying to hold the thing up, mate. <laughs> you're, playing, you're walking on eggshells, ain't you, really? It's safe, ish. 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 Yeah. All right, <laughs> mate. <too. laughs> right. Wow. I'm just with Rob now. Just having a last drink of water before bed, and it looks absolutely amazing out there. We're seeing a lot of movement close in as well, but we think it's catfish. I reckon he's going to catch a nosser catfish tonight, aren't you, mate? Wouldn't mind one, well, I don't fancy. <laughs> Don't fancy an overgrown tap. Yeah, again, again, you're not going to see this, but if you can see my finger now, it's in line with that, just out there, and that is probably two rod lengths off of Rob's spot. So yeah, hopefully next time you're tuning in in the middle of the night, or hopefully in the next hour, or hopefully in the next 10 minutes, one of us can catch an absolute pig, <laughs> and um, hopefully get a new PB by the morning. We're not asking for much, mate. Oh, we just a box common, or the ghosty. You yeah, know, the ghosty would be nice. See you guys in a bit. Well, um... <laughs> I know I said I wouldn't mind a cat, but... Not a tadpole? No. A zig and a... On, on, on a bottom bait or on a zig? Bottom bait. Bottom bait. Oh, mate, well, yeah, I'll let you get that one back then, mate, and enjoy that. Um, yeah. Enjoy, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, mate. Oh, 
Wow, that hasn't happened again guys if I'm honest. The wind's still trolling down that end and Kev's just come up to be honest. He's literally just poked his head around and I was half asleep. He said, mate, I gotta go. My missus ain't very well. I goes, oh you're joking. So Kev's actually Kevin right down the end, bless him and yeah, he's had to go, which I'm a bit gutted about, to be honest, but I really do hope his missus is all right. Um, I really, really do, because there's a lot coming up for him, and I'm not going to say too much, because it's personal about his daughter and stuff. They're going away, and it's all quite exciting, but anyway, yeah. Good luck, Kev, and hopefully you get back, mate, and um, you sort of fin out. But yeah, nothing last night for me, nothing, because it's quite apparent the fish are against that margin and down the end. First thing Kev said to me, I goes... He said, mate, they've been hauling in the corner. I said, yeah, tell me about it. Um, I've been watching them roll the last 48 hours, and it's, it's, it's clear they're down the end. I mean, the fish have been coming out, there's no doubt in that, but I think they're absolutely stacked up down that end. And um, Kevin said, literally, he said he's been sat there watching them show like dolphins, show after show after show after show after show. I mean, I've been sat out all along that margin the whole time I've been there, show after show after show. Um, I don't know if I'll get footage, I'm probably not going to be able to get footage because it's Rob's footage. Um, but he went round and had a quick sneaky look when he went over to um, pop up and get some drinks from the, the shop yesterday. He's put his camera down and underneath that tree line, mate, I've never seen so many 20s. Unbelievable. So that is a massive priority for me over the duration of this year, going into the next um, next year. I want to try a session in that peg. Now obviously I can't book it. Um, but that peg over there would be nice or the first one when you come in on St John's and that bay to yourself I think I'd absolutely rip up trees in them pegs so yeah I'm gonna sort of maybe stay till midday today I think guys and I'm gonna literally um, leave the rods out I'm not gonna touch them I'm happy where they were I had some I had some liners on my right hand rod this morning on the zig and which was weird and then there was fish showing off the back of the gentleman's next to me but sort of just out of this water in that sort of them two pegs over there they've definitely shown off the back of us and not no not you not have your rights to cast there put it that way um so yeah it is what it is but i'm gonna sit back enjoy the enjoy some breakfast now probably make a rob brung me down these bad boys um so i'm gonna have one of them in a minute coffee latte wake myself up a bit because i'm a little bit at the moment and hopefully I can nick one before I go guys and I'm sorry it hasn't been an action packed video with nosses coming out and nosses like last week's video but ultimately, the ultimate scenario is that is fishing and like I said at the beginning of this session when I turn up I just had to pick a peg, we were, we, were that, we were that close, we were that close and I say it you know we were that close from driving home me and Kev we nearly said we'd go to a local water near us which I was well up for because I haven't fished that local water in a long time and it's a, it's a lake close to my heart but we didn't we thought we'd walk St John's before we leave, come over. We were about half an hour too late for the two end pegs on the end, which I'm gutted about, because that would have been a different scenario now, and I reckon we've had numerous fish on the bank. Um, and this was the, I'm in the only peg that was left, and obviously Kev, there was a lovely peg right down the end. Me and Kev both looked at it, but it was just perfect scenario for Kev. Um, so we went in there, we had an agreement. I said, no, 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 you, you go in there, mate. And I wanted him to, have, it just didn't happen. Didn't happen, didn't happen that session. Anyway, I've got a Parker Bates customer call which I'm going to take now, and I'll see you guys in a bit. <laughs> wow, it's eggy time. Look at them. Smash one of them. Rob's here, so egg sandwiches for this morning and to enjoy the last couple of hours. And like I said earlier, I'm going to leave them rods and just hopefully they go now. Sat there a little bit depressed in a little bit. Ugh. Watching the guy go around the other side on that margin, mate, weren't we? Filling it in by hand. It's the dream over there, isn't it? It looks really, really nice. But anyway, back to our eggs. <laughs> oh, the dreaded, dreaded pack up now. I've just got my bed chair left. I'm literally gonna chill for the next 20 minutes everything back here my rubbish so it's nice for the next person slings nets drying rod bag there rob's up there enjoying himself because i'm jealous and he's here for the next three nights <laughs> but yeah fingers crossed <sighs> there's always time but if i'm honest with you guys i just 
I'm not that confident. The fish are down there and along that margin. And in the night time they're coming out of the bay, they're getting to about here from what I can see in regards to shows and then sort of slowly going back in. And I mean it's relentless. I mean I've been standing there the last hour, I've probably seen about seven shows all in that bay and probably about four or five all along the margin. So they're definitely over there. And Rob went around there yesterday and again, like I said, I ain't got a video of it, but he, he they, they, they put it this way, they're over there. <laughs> so right, see you soon. I'll definitely check out before I leave and I'll keep you posted guys. But until then, hopefully next time you see me, Nossa in the net. Last thing now, Rod bivvies away and the Nossa Barrow is all built up, ready to go back to the car and the long push round. <sighs> and guys, that is my session done here on St. John's and it's been a very, very frustrating and hard session. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, obviously not in the, not in there with excuses aside, not in the peg I wanted to be in, um, but I've had a good social with Kev and also Rob. So there it is and um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and maybe taken something from it. If you have, get in the comments down below, guys. But until between now, I don't know where I am next week, to be honest. Um, I might have something a little bit interesting, because I might be going to Dean's next week, but I'm still waiting for a phone call back um, to see whether I can go up there going into next week, which is the, the lake in the back garden with the 40-pounders in. So that would be a different scenario, because I'll probably go up on my own, and I can't wait. But anyway, there it is. Um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> there it is, God. Right guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. If you've liked this video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward. And I'll see you same time next Sunday, 7.30. Peace out, all the best. See you soon.